Hello, I think this is video four. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm at. It's hard to tell. On um, blood, chapter 17, and this cover, we're starting with leukocytes, white blood cells. So white blood cells don't carry oxygen. They're really a completely separate type of cell. They uh, circulate with your blood. They oftentimes leave your blood and they serve uh, in an immune function or a defensive function. So they're gonna be uh, cells that will eat or destroy or provide chemical defense against uh, things you don't want in your body. They are able to leave capillaries. They can get out into the lymph and into the interstitial tissue through a process called diapodesis. It's not hard to say, just say it, diapodesis. And that kind of means jumping across the, the wall or slipping through a gap in the wall. Positive chemotaxis means that uh, chemotaxis means chemical movement. Taxis is a type of movement. So positive chemotaxis means movement towards a chemical. And they move like amoeba, they move like a blob. So that sort of blob-like movement is called amoeboid locomotion. So how they move is amoeboid locomotion. The direction they move is positively towards a chemical. Uh, leukopoiesis, see that poiesis ending, that means manufacture of, so you're made in the bone marrow just like any other blood cell in the red marrow. And uh, some of them mature there, some of them have to go outside and mature elsewhere, but we'll talk about that in the immune system. There are five different types of leukocyte, and uh, I'm arranging them in order of most common to least common over here. So neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils. So listen to my words that are coming out of my mouth. Eosinophil and basophil. Now that's in order from most common to least common. And a way to remember that is the first letter, never let monkeys eat bananas. So that'll give you all the blood cells in order from most common to least common. There are two different types of leukocyte. There are ones with granules called granulocytes and one without granules, granules called agranulocytes. So if you wanna remember the granulocytes, just remember to never eat bananas. And if you want to remember the agranulocytes, just remember to let monkeys. And my dumb dad joke is that let monkeys because they're going to do it anyway. So uh, let's talk about the granulocytes first. Uh, here we are, never eat bananas. Uh, they have darkly staining granules in the cytoplasm. They're kind of big. They don't live very long. And they tend to be specialists, as I'll, as I'll describe, and phagocytes. So when this screen changes, I've already requested it to do so. Tick tock, tick tock, there it goes. Here are the granulocytes and some images of them. I've kind of scattered them around. So neutrophils are over here, eosinophils here, basophils down here. Uh, here are some rough percentages and your book will give a range, but I figured it's easier just to pick a, a good number in the middle somewhere. So, and I made them all add up to 100%, same way as it is in your lab. So neutrophils, most common, over half. 62%. Uh, they're also called polymorphonuclear leukocytes because you can see that their nuclei have many shapes. Polymorph, many shapes of the nucleus. I'll be doing this the whole semester. I hope you don't hate it. Breaking down words for you. Uh, they are the major phagocytes in your bloodstream. These guys are going to be the ones that eat up anything. If it's, if it's not supposed to be there, they're going to eat it. And they're also able to pop things. They produce chemicals that will puncture the, uh, the cell membranes of, of pathogenic things and, and destroy them that way. Now we jump way down here. So eosinophils, remember, never let monkeys should be in here. So we're down to the fifth most common leukocyte, but it's still the second most common granulocyte. So eosinophils, they are red. You can see that they're a bit more reddish purple than the neutrophils, about the same size, usually a bilobed nucleus. Uh, that'll be more important for lab, but these two things go hand in hand. They are phagocytes also, but their main job is to lice or pop parasitic worms. You are, you've, if you get tapeworms, if you get roundworms, if you get flukes, uh, which you probably have, you probably have a good population of worms, not, that's not hurting you, but uh, the way I like to describe it is if you took all of your tissue and made it disappear, you'd still see an outline of lots of you in worms. Pretty gross. Uh, but you have eosinophils there to pop them and otherwise get rid of them. But you can see that all three of these, uh, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils all include phagocytosis. So they all phagocytize stuff. 
Not their major job for an eosinophil, not the major job for a basophil. Basophil's major job is to produce histamine and heparin during an inflammatory response. So when you get cut or scraped or damaged or injured, or you get a reaction to a pathogen, uh, you're going to produce histamine, which you may uh, mostly associate with antihistamine, getting rid of histamine. But histamine is really great for making the tissue that's infected swell. If it swells, it's because there's fluid and white blood cells going there. And heparin is also a nice thing that prevents clotting. So it's a, a coagulation preventative uh, chemical. You want the blood and lymph to flow to the site of the injury and fight off any infections. Now we move on to the agranulocytes, uh, which are just let and monkeys. So uh, these guys don't have any granules. You can see clear cytoplasm here for the most part. Uh, they look similar to each other. You can get some large lymphocytes that look like monocytes, but they're not that closely related. They're from different cell lines. They can live a long time or a very short time. Uh, specifically, these guys, these B cells right here, a type of lymphocyte which we'll discuss in the immune system, can live for years, decades. Uh, otherwise, they usually live a few hours or a couple days. Uh, lymphocytes, these are concentrated in your lymph, which we'll talk about later in another chapter, which is fluid that leaks out of your blood, uh, blood vessels and filters through your tissues. And these guys are really important in developing an immunity to something. Not just defensive measures, but an immune response where you become immune to things that you've already experienced. So chicken pox, got that when I was a baby or a kid. I've probably been given chicken pox a dozen times since then, but I've never gotten sick because I'm immune to it. They can also do direct cellular attack, uh, or in the case of B cells, produce antibody, but that'll be... The details are to be known in a later chapter, but know these, know these superficial bits here. And lastly, monocytes, uh, which are really big cells. You can see their size compared to a red blood cell here, twice as big diameter-wise, uh, whereas these lymphocytes are about the same size, maybe slightly bigger. Monocytes are big phagocytes. They also uh, exit your bloodstream to become what are called ma macrophages, which we already talked about. They typically have a real obvious kidney bean shaped nucleus. So look for that. I'll always use one in lab or, or especially lab when uh, illustrating a monocyte. The last slide for this screencast is uh, some disorders and then platelets. So leukocyte disorders, there's many, but we'll just talk about uh, leukemias, which is a family of cancers, which cause the white blood cells to become uh, produced, overproduced, but not to be finished. So it's like you're making a bunch of cars and you push them out of the factory without their wheels on them or without a motor or without some integral part. So they get you manufacture bunches of these leukocytes, fill up the marrow with them, push them out into the bloodstream and really waste a lot of energy and waste a lot of uh, space on cells that don't work. Two basic types, acute and chronic. Uh, Acute is really critical care type stuff because you can populate a ton of these cells from the very base stem cells, which if you do that, you're not going to be making other cells either. So you'd get real immune deficiency problems in children with uh, acute leukemia. Uh, you can recover from it uh, with treatment, uh, but it is fairly deadly. Uh, the chronic forms usually are found in elderly people. They're just kind of malfunctioning later stages in the development of leukocytes kind of more of a, like they say, chronic problem because it can kind of hang with you. Uh, if you get sick from it, it's most likely due to internal hemorrhaging, a lack of oxygen, and the resultant infections from no white blood cells. Now mono, you've all heard of that, mononucleosis, it's fairly well, fairly easily uh, transmitted through body fluids, uh, including saliva, which is why they sometimes call it a kissing disease. And it is a viral lymphocyte infection uh, there's a virus called the Epstein-Barr vi Epstein virus, which infects your lymphocytes, causing them to become much larger. They don't work very well. And there's no actual cure, but you generally have this for a few weeks. And then if you were a kid and got it and then recovered, you felt real weak for a while. And they kept you in your room for three or four weeks. Uh, shifting gears to platelets or otherwise known as thrombocytes, a thrombosis where a thrombus is a clot. So platelets are clotting cells, thrombocytes, clotting cells. 
and they are fragments of a very large cell called a megakaryocyte. So you're in your bone marrow, you make this ginormous cell called a megakaryocyte, and it kind of blebs off, little chunks of it pinch off as they exit the marrow and enter your bloodstream. So you get these little, they're literally not whole cells, they're just cell fragments, uh, which we'll discuss their um, function in the next screencast. The process of making platelets is called thrombopoiesis. So notice that poiesis ending again. We have hematopoiesis for blood, uh, erythropoiesis for red blood cells, leukopoiesis for white blood cells, and thrombopoiesis for platelets. And that's the end of this video.